personally that I can uh, deal with is that defending as a long range option on this map can be occasionally difficult at least i find it difficult and that as you can see just from like us coming into the map that mask comes straight from the spawn but there's also a lot of walls in the way so if you're a long range option trying to use your maximum effective range but also trying to defend this push you have to wait for someone you're either having to shoot over that wall and hope that some shots land or that you know they're going to get the enemy team stuck or you're having to wait for them to come around that wall and you might having to sacrifice some points or you know anything else for it you know, I'm looking at the team comps here, and unbelievably, we called the 96 Gal Deco pick. We were talking about it leading up to the game, and it actually did end up getting played here. So <clears throat> I'm really excited to see how it can do. Of course, you talked about some of the struggles, and I'm actually unsure what Brave was doing there. Maybe didn't see the auto bomb or misjudge the timing of it. Hunter with a nice shot there onto the Brella. Thought the canopy might protect him, but it does not. They will get taken out, however, by Midi, who is going to be on that ballpoint spotling. Of course, the gimmick with that weapon is that it shoots at a shorter range and a wider shot variation in the beginning, and then a much tighter compact shot variance um, on that longer range shooting. So really, really nice job there. We did see one fall into the water, and Luxton has to back off here as the Tenor Missiles are tracking both them and Burst. So it looks like so far, Cephalo Squad doing a great job of maintaining control of mid. We do indeed see Mario on that high ground, does get the kill there onto Sky Guys, was waiting for somebody to get too close to the Rainmaker barrier. And so far, neither team able to make much progress. Right now we're seeing out of Hikaru Memento a really honestly backline heavy comp. We're on the other side of Cephalo Squad, they're having a bit more aggressiveness. They have, you know, their supports in the form of the Inzap for the painting, the Jet as the backline, the Akasha as their forward, and maybe their Clash is sort of a midline to, you know, kind of flex role where they can be midline and frontline. But we have a like, you know, a similar thing with from last game with uh, they have High Car Mentor has a really backline heavy comp. They don't really have anything to have that in aggression and push in and hold off the uh, other team. Walks in with an unbelievably important kill there. There were three down, and they were able to delay the Rainmaker all the way at, I believe, the 83 mark. Now stop them at 59. That push could have been way, way worse, but it's still going here. They passed the halfway mark. Midi waiting behind that wall, and they will eventually take them out at the 33 mark, which will stop the push as they both lose their Clash Blaster Neo and their Octo Shot. So very strong push. Could have been a lot worse. I think some heroic plays were made there by Hikaru Memento in order to stop that from being a full knockout, but so far, Cephalo Squad entirely controlling the pace of play here. I think Hikaru Memento not doing much more than getting the occasional good pick. Mario trading there with Hunter. Uh, had that Stingray at the ready, so maybe would have liked to see them stop this Rainmaker push with that Stingray. And now the only special available to them is the Ballpoint Splatlink's Inkjet. So when they will use it is probably not until you know when they try and push into that drop down where the pedestal is we'll have to see here as hunter being the bodyguard not able to find the shots onto mario multiple specials coming out in the stingray and the ink armor so it's going to be a lot of protection here for the rainmaker carrier mario going to fall and they should have a pretty clear path first one of the only resistance members here and they will get all the way around to the 19 mark won't extend their lead at all midi set up pretty well but it's looking great so far for cephalo squids Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm thinking honestly what we were seeing, unfortunately, out of Cephalo, or sorry, not Cephalo Squad, but Hikaru Memento, is what I exactly feared for them is that they didn't really have anything aggressive. Yes, you can see they were too busy sitting back because they didn't have nothing to move forward with to keep, uh, keep Cephalo Squad out of their base and push them back so that they can get back to mid. As I was saying, you have to either wait for people to come out the wall if with those backline weapons, there's no way for them to really move in. And they also kind of in a way lack the paint coverage they have the brella with bomb rush and they have the dynamo but the dynamo can be so slow and so can the 96 in being so slow if but the rng is not in their favor and so having to deal with that they have to kind of slowly push their way back in a lot more than like and then that that kind of wastes time and them trying to get the rainmaker back especially with the lead as close as four onesie on this clash blaster it's not really a weapon that you would consider for a lot of patience usually you would just want to bum rush the enemy team and try and get as many indirects or directs as you can and take them out but a lot of great patience there by onesie in that left hand side court building up that 
uh, Tenna Missile and trying to use it. Oh, and unfortunately, Sky Guys, I have to cut myself off here as Sky Guys misses <laughs> the jump. Unfortunately, won't be able to extend that lead at all yet, at least, as Onesie will have to pick up the slack. Thankfully for them, Hikaru Memento was down a couple of members as well, so Cephalo Squad able to get this Rainmaker back, and they really don't need to make any significant progress. They've stopped Hikaru Memento from making any pushes so far. They might be looking for the knockout, but more so, they just need to hold on to this Rainmaker for as long as possible. The Brella being one of the biggest threats here, as is the Inkjet, but Onesie using these walls very, very well. Hunter using the Inkjet to try and back off Mario will not find the final shot, but will do enough to keep the Rainmaker safe for the final five seconds. I think they'll be able to hold on to it, and they will. Cephalo Squad with a fantastic opener here on Manta Maria, and they will take a 1-0 to zero set lead. Yeah, Cephalo Squad being able to just have entire domination the entire match. As you can see, there is barely a splotch of yellow ink from Hikaru Mento in there. Basically, just had domination the entire match, was able to keep all of Hikaru Mento back in their spawn. As I was saying, like for instance, Mario was up on that grate, but on that grating, there's no way for you to recover ink. You have to either drop down and risk getting, you know, being in that unfair situation of where a short range shooter could just kind of run on top of you if you're not careful. But you don't, you know, you have the option to ink, but then you can't move. In in those instances, it was just really unfortunately in high car mentos favor i'm hoping that we can maybe see a bit more aggression for, from them maybe a little more back line i mean front line sorry and if and even if it doesn't have to be necessarily you know we have to see a ten attack we have to see a blast or anything it could be something as simple as roll or something that isn't as clunky and can move a little quick more quickly to get behind cephalo squad so that they can get that control back in the mid and as part of that, you know, the, the main backbone, that back line for them, and a person we didn't really talk about in game number one is Brave. And Brave was on that custom jet squelcher. When they were pushing forward, they always had a stingray, it seemed, to make sure that the Rainmaker stayed relatively safe, at least in the direct path that they were swimming in. So it's unusual to see a Stingray used offensively rather than defensively to try and use it when your team is pushing rather than when the enemy team is attempting to make a push. But Brave did such a fantastic job in their positioning, was constantly back enough so that they could still have an impact on the play, but not so far back uh, that they were getting, you know, taken out. And I think this is another map where we could see it return. There's a lot of high ground opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of long range sight lines that you have on a map like Wahoo World that you can use in this custom jet squelcher to get a kill. And also, because it is tower control, the Stingray is going to be a very, very effective special for shutting down any potential pushes that Hikaru Memento is going to make. I think out of, on the side of Hikaru Memento, maybe we'll see Mario still continue to use that Dynamo for the Stingray, as everyone knows that Stingray is a really good both to start a push and mostly, also mostly to end pushes on this stage. And I, just like I had predicted, Mario staying on the Dynamo, being their long-range option, and Midnight instead choosing to go the Hero Slosher, being able to use those Tina Missile buffs. Because they're, honestly, I think as we've seen, they're really good for the tower, for people getting people off the tower and slowing down those pushes as well. I do want to note, in terms of gear that they're running, Mario is running that Respawn Punisher. Respawn Punisher going to lengthen the time that you will spend coming back from spawn if Mario does end up killing you. So it looks like his role is mainly going to be a lot of survivability, a lot of painting, and anyone that he takes out getting sent back to spawn for a lot longer than they're used to. Luxon going to be the one sitting on the tower for now. Uh, Mario trying to look for the killer onto onesie and instead will back off and is in very contested territory. Hunter going to fall here, looking for another kill there. Sky Guys is also around, does find some fall-off shots, and that will result in the kill, using the Stingray to find maybe a third Brave back all the way off into their spawn and will use the counter Stingray. But it looks like neither player really getting too much out of it past that point. But a great job as Mario is the main person allowing this tower to push forward and giving Lux and Burst a lot of breathing room. If you've known Mario for any amount of time, you'll know that he's a very in-your-face player. And in this instance, it's honestly working out in his favor with the amount, sheer amount of ink that the Dynamo is able to put out. You can't, it might not be as fearsome as it was in Splatoon 1, but it's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Sky Guys behind being able to take out that aggressive backline and able to being able to get Cephalo Squad to slowly get back into the mid, causing Hikaru Mento to reset. Yeah, Sky Guys with a great job there. I think a triple to end that push in spades there. Hunter using the wall to try and stay far enough back, but they are getting accosted by multiple members of Hikaru Memento. Luxon on this blaster. The blaster has been a weapon 
And that's been using the splashdown for quite a while. It's been in the meta for quite a while as well, despite it having a special that's not very popular these days. A good direct there onto Onesie. We see that the Inkjet is staying far enough back to where it can't really be affected by Luxon, but Luxon's job is done. Luxon backs off the members of Cephalo Squad from the tower, gets a parting shot onto not one, but two members there of Cephalo Squad, and they will force them all the way back. That means they have no specials at the ready. On the opposite side of things, the Slosher is going to have those Tenta missiles, and Mario has their special ready as well. Brave will fall too. The Splashdown almost ready yet again for Luxon, who's been staying alive a lot longer than Blasters usually do, to be honest. And now, instead of Luxon being on the tower, they have people like Midi there. Mario, that's unfortunate timing, but they're doing their job. This tower is pushed all the way to the very end. Yeah, I think what we're seeing is that, unfortunately, perhaps Cephalo Squad was un re not ready for this dynamic that Hikaru Mentu is bringing, and whereas the backline, the backline weapon is being the aggressor, and Luxon the frontline weapon, the blaster, is honestly kind of playing a more midline role. There, as you see, they were mostly using, just doing cleanup. You know, they were not the ones picking people off, but instead cleaning up the people that were being chipped on. And I think in that instance, it's working in Hikaru Mentu's favor. Unfortunately, Lexington goes down with this inkjet by Sky Guys, and Hikaru Mentu slowly gets pushed back toward their spawn. Yeah, nice shot there, aiming exactly in the right spot to trade with Mario upon landing from that inkjet. And as, you know, you mentioned, to take your phrase, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. It's basically the same thing with the inkjet. You can use it as aggressively or as defensively as you want to. You can make it purely a zoning special, or you can just get right on top of people and try and direct them from below. In terms of specials, we are seeing another Tenor Missiles come out. It will just go onto one member of Hikara Memento, as Cephalo Squad has a long way to go. They do pass the halfway mark here, and they will get all the way to checkpoint two. Midi attempting to rain down some shots, will end up getting onesie before uh, that second or final, rather, Flash Blaster shot gets traded out. Three members down now for Cephalo Squad as Hikara Memento attempts to end this push, and it looks like they will as the end zap is all the way back in mid, attempting to build up their ink armor, which I think is a smart move. No need to push in and get yourself killed and take away all that progress, or most of that progress, towards your special. Yeah, so I was honestly there. I was gonna see Mario use his Stingray there to stop that push, but instead he Viret just kind of used, decided to use it instead, not at all, and used his weapon instead to get the kill. So that way, maybe he has some special saver and he's waiting to use it for what will eventually be Cephalo Squad's last push to get the lead. And in that case, he'll definitely want to make sure he has it, as there might not be enough ink in their spawn, and he wants to make sure he has that Stingray to stop that push and shut that one down so that they can't get the lead. And here's the Stingray. We do see some shots coming out onto Burst, who is around the tower there. Finds a couple more, but is not able to get a kill there. Is playing still very aggressive for a custom jet. Is not able to get within range of the tower and use those Burst Bombs to try and get some damage on the high car Memento. You can see Onesie also throwing some curling bombs over that ledge, and that will be the lead for Cephalo Squad. Will they be able to get the knockout? There's 10 seconds left to go, and it's going to need a miracle here for Hikaru Memento to come back. They do force a three-down situation, Hunter jumping in to make it a full wipe, but now here's the job for Hikaru Memento. They need to take this time, get control of mid again, build up their specials, and ride this tower all the way to the end. You can see that Cephalo Squad's doing the exact same thing. They do not want to go into this engagement, particularly brave on this custom jet with the Stingray. They do not want to go into this engagement without any specials to work with. Mm -hmm. For sure, they want to make their fire. Their first priority is to take out Brave. They want to take out that jet and make sure that their push cannot be stopped. They already armored up, but the Stingray isn't out, which is what one concern I have. I would have saved the armor to make sure that I would be able to at least take a few hits from that Stingray, because right now it's online for Cephalo Squad, and unfortunately, Haikai Mento is dropping light flies, and they unfortunately, with their lead loss, they also lose the match. Uh, they do get all the way past the halfway mark they get about i would say to the 70 or 60 mark and luxon had such a good opportunity to take out sky guys had the indirect on them was not able to get that second direct or indirect great positioning there by sky guys in order to get the kill and that also served as a bit of a distraction right nobody was on the tower the stingray helped to kind of clean that one up and because of it uh it appears that we do have a two to zero lead for Cephalo Squad. So Hikaru Memento coming so close and yet so far, and they will now need the reverse sweep in order to take this set. We go on now to Splat Zones on Mako Mart. We did touch on this one before. The plus shape of the zone, the plenty of different elevations for both long and short range weapons to excel. What do you think Hikaru Memento has to do or bring to give themselves the best chance at least to make it to game four? 
personally, I feel that maybe one of the one slip up that maybe Hikara and Mento had is that they might have gotten a little greedy. They kind of felt a little complacent with their lead. It definitely wasn't a bad lead, but they could have definitely made it a stronger lead. And they, I mean, it was, it, it, there's never a safe lead in my, in my opinion. And even at 16, I would have kept pushing to get it further, so that way, you know, there would be more time for Mario to grind his Stingray, get out of the way so he can Stingray, or stall for, you know, stall for more time for his teammates to come back. And so I think what we need to see for the Splat Zones match is that they need to have that same hunger the entirety of the match. And, you know, to keep pushing forward, to keep moving, to keep, you know, making sure that they're going to hold that lead. And in terms of how these teams did in their group stages, we have Hikara Memento coming from Pool A2. They did finish in third place behind BB Last Station and FT Win. Cephalo Squad came in fourth in their pool behind Ink Zeta, Duck Dollar Bills, and Amaterasu. So Hikara Memento put up a pretty impressive showing in their pool, but now Cephalo Squad really showing, you know, despite barely making it into the redemption bracket, that they deserve to be here and not just here, but in top 32. But there is still a chance for Hikara Memento to take this one all the way to game five, their first rule though their first necessity has to be taking this one to a game four so let's see what they've brought with them it looks like the clash blaster neo returning for onesie braves custom jet sculpture coming as well and the custom splatter shot junior for hunter as we mentioned before it does have that now larger intake of 110 units rather than 100 so it can throw two auto bombs at a time that's going to be pretty tricky to navigate even with the slight nerfs that it also received mm -hmm. i think out of this perhaps they're looking to disrupt mario as you know auto bombs they don't you know, have a finite, and since they don't have a finite time for them to explode, they definitely only explode after a certain time, but you can prime them to explode sooner if you walk toward them, but at the same time, they require you to move, which is one of the difference in compared to the other bombs. You know, they require to, to relocate, which is going to be really disruptful to a weapon like the Dynamo, which can get called out by bombs really easily. Maybe here using that baller on the zone. The undercover Sorella Bro it does have that baller in tow, so you can start to use that baller right on top of the zone. And with a zone this small, it does at least take control away from the enemy team. But so far, Cephalo Squad has locked this one down fantastically. Until then, Icar Memento finally able to get some momentum going and put a huge penalty of 60 on to the members of Cephalo Squad. However, Mario does fall with his ink armor not used, so the team not going to get the benefit of that until he builds it up once again. Lugson trying to get on top of this high ground here and falling Nitty, who is going to be ballering but not finding any kills, and Brave just sitting on top of that platform. Brave never really has to move if they don't want to. They can sit on top of that platform all day, have a huge impact on the zone with that custom jet sculpture, and even have enough range to throw the burst bombs onto the zone. So with that, it was a pretty quick return and a takeover again by Cephalo Squad. Yeah, I think what we need to see High Power Man to do is while they're using their specials, I don't think we see them particularly using them together. We didn't have exactly a good look at it, but let's them pretty much kind of save the match there, being able to use their bubbles on the zone and catch their, not only get a kill, but get the zone as well. And right now we just kind of see High Power Man to kind of just dying one by one. We need to see them come back in, get their specials all together and use them as well at the same time. And you can see here the power of the custom Splattershot Jr. They did fall to Mario there, but before then they were throwing, you know, Auto Bomb, Ink Storm, Auto Bomb again, and that will do it. No time for Hikaru Memento to even get back into the action. And what you were talking about, Spectre, seems to have worked. The Auto Bombs were constantly tracking Mario, did not really give Mario an opportunity to get into a great position and fire off some shots. So Cephalo Squad, in one of their most emphatic victories yet, completely shuts down Hikaru Memento, only allows them to take control of the zone once, and they will win with the 3-0 to zero sweep and make it all the way to top 32 tomorrow. Well, we saw some good play, honestly, on both sides. I think, unfortunately, Hikaru Memento just 